In this video, we're going to be going over how to actually conduct an independent samples t-test in R. The data we'll be working with is our teaching method experiment data again, where the data is in a data frame. We have ID, what teaching method was actually used, old versus new, the biological sex of the participant, their score on a pretest, and then their score on a post-test. This is sort of this hypothetical experiment in this instance. So, one test that we would probably want to run is an independent samples t-test. We have a sample or a group or condition where people receive the old teaching method and then a different independent group of people that receive the new teaching method. And we have post-test scores for both. So perhaps we would want to compare these post-test scores to see which group actually did better on the post-test exam as a function of the teaching method they actually had. So fortunately, doing this in R is really, really simple. There are actual multiple different ways to do it depending how you have your data set up. The method that we're going to go over is if you have your data set up in quote long format where everything is stacked into one column. So we have all the post-test scores stacked into one column for both conditions. So the function that we'll need is t.test. And then we need to indicate what column in our data frame actually has the dependent variable first. So post test, oh, post test underscore score. And we can sort of check ourselves right over here. Then we use this little squiggly line, which I forget the name of. And then we need to indicate what the factor we're looking at is. In this case, it is the teaching method. Then we need to indicate where these columns are. So what data frame are they in? So data equals teaching method experiment. Now, there are then a couple more options you can then specify. Bear.equal. And then if you set that equal to true, it will assume that the variance of the two groups are equal, and it will use that method for conducting an independent samples t-test. If you were to set it to false, it will then use that method of the independent samples t-test that doesn't assume the variances of the two groups are equal. For our purposes right now, let's go ahead and set this to true today and run that. So it gives us the result of our two sample t-test. It lets us know what data we had post-test score by teaching method, gives us our t-value, our degrees of freedom, and then returns our p-value. So that's the essential sort of information that we need if we were going to then turn around and report this in a journal. We have our t-value, our degrees of freedom, and our p-value. Now, assuming we were using sort of the nominal scientific alpha of 0.05, in this case, we would end up rejecting the null hypothesis and we would have a significant result. It will also give you the 95% confidence interval of the mean difference. And it'll also report the means in these two groups, both the new and the old. So now that we have this significant result, we may want to visualize that. So let's Pull up ggplot real quick. All right, so we've got ggplot pulled up. And now let's go ahead and give ourselves a graph. Graph 1 equals ggplot. And then specify the data we want. Then for the aesthetics, we want our post-test score to be on the y-axis. As sort of a general rule of thumb, um, always put your dependent variable on your y-axis, and then your independent variable, in this case the teaching method, on your x-axis. So we've got that base frame of the graph set up, such that if we were to run graph one, we could see that we've got our post-test score and our teaching method. We've got the bare bones, sort of the framework that we'll actually build this graph in. So now we need to start adding layers. So stat summary, and then as a function of y, we would like the 
mean, and we would like the mean to be represented as a geometric object, specifically a bar. If we're going to create a bar graph, and we would like the borders of our bar to be black, and we would like the insides of our bar to be white. So now we have those lovely bars there. Now this represents our mean difference. However, we will want to sort of represent the variance in our data and give some type of error bar. So let's go ahead and create error bars that would have the standard error of the mean on them. So function the data is the mean, we would like the standard error of the mean. We would like these to be represented as an error bar. And let's make the width of that air bar 2.2. All right, now we have those two bars set up there nice how we like them. Now, one thing that's particularly common, and it's something that I would advise you to do, is when you have a significant difference and you're visualizing that significant difference, is to annotate your graph such that you actually represent that significant so to do this, let's add a bar over the top with an asterisk to indicate that our t-test indicated this was a significant mean difference at the p less than 0.05 level. So let's go ahead and set y-axis limits to give us a little bit of room. So y gets us 0 to 100. That gives us a little bit of room there, and it looks like right here at about... Oh, let's say mm, 90 looks like it might be a good spot to put that line. And when we want to add a line, it's geom segment, geometric object that is a segment. We start with the initial spot that we want it to be, so x equals 1, which will be right dead center over new, and y equals 90. And then our second point, x end, equals 2. And then our y, we still want to be equal to 90. So geom segment, x, y, and then x and y to tell it where to go. So now we have that nice, lovely line segment there. Now let's go ahead and add that asterisk. In this case, it's geom text. And when we add geom text, we need to again specify the x and y coordinates. So let's make it perfectly between the two bars with x equals 1.5 and y. We want to now be a little bit above, so let's go with 95 and see how that looks. And then we need to indicate what we would like the text to say with an argument label and then equals to the string value we would like in parentheses. So now we have the little asterisk, but it's kind of a little too small. So let's increase it a little bit. Let's go with size equals 12. There we go, and that's easier to see. So now when someone looks at this graph, they can right away tell, hey, look, this mean difference that we're visualizing here is actually a significant difference. Then we can go about changing all the other little things that we need to to make this graph presentable. So let's get the theme classic, and then let's change our labels. We want our x-axis label to be teaching method, and we would like our y-axis label to be our post-test score. There, and now we have this nice, awesome graph that is representing this t-test that we found and this mean difference that we're able to observe. 